Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today I will be talking to you guys about the books that I read in May and in June. So I didn't film a May wrap up partially because I had lots of deadlines that I still needed to do. So I didn't really have time to film it, but also I only read two books and I felt like I don't know if I should talk about only like two books in a wrap-up video, but in June I read quite some stories. I consumed them, most of them I loved, so today let's talk about the seven books that I finished in these past two months, plus the two books that I'm currently reading. The first book that I finished in May, I'm so happy I did, and that one is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. This is the beautiful collector's edition, which has amazing fan art in the back of it, which I just want to show you guys because it's so pretty. So look and then here we have Cass and Inej, Nina and Matthias, Jasper and Wylan and then at the end we have Kuei, Yu, Bo and it's so pretty. This is the sequel to Six of Crows like probably the majority of you guys have read this duology. I again as per usual was late to the party and read Six of Crows like four years after it came out this year and I loved it. I adored the crap out of that book. Crooked Kingdom. What do I think of this book? Um I definitely enjoyed the story in Crooked Kingdom as well. I will not tell you what this book is about because it's a sequel, but Six of Crows, if you don't know, is a heist story in a fantasy world. We follow six characters who each have a very different background. Quite often they also have kind of like a troubled backstory. The characters is, in my opinion, the best thing about these books and I think a lot of you guys would agree with me. The way that we were introduced to the characters, I enjoyed that very much. It was an action-packed story and I was constantly on the edge of my seat and I didn't know what to expect with Crooked Kingdom considering the ending of Six of Crows which was pretty intense but I quite enjoyed it. Unfortunately though I don't think I enjoyed it as much as book one just because I didn't like the story as much but also because it took me a whole month to read this book due to all of my deadlines so every single time that I was reading a couple of chapters I couldn't fully get into it because I couldn't hold my attention with the story and that was just a shame so I think that partially also kind of lowered my enjoyment but still I would give it a 4.25 out of 5 stars we got to know the characters even better in this book. It was still quite an action-packed plot, but I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as Six of Crows, but still a wonderful book. Plus, I finished a series. It's a duology, but still, these are a bit more chunky books. I also read lots of like short stories in May and June, and then specifically non-fiction. So I also have Damn Honey. This is a Dutch book, so the rest of the title is Een positief pleidooi om te doen waar je zelf zin in hebt. The translation is something along a positive message to do whatever you want, whatever you please. And this is written by Marie Lotte Hage and Nidia van Forthuizen. They also have a podcast, so if you're Dutch, then I would definitely recommend this non-fiction book about feminism. It is like 80 pages long and I like put down so many notes as well on like quotes that I could recognize myself in or that I thought were very important. I think a lot of feminists read non-fiction books about feminism but I think it's very important for other people besides feminists to read about feminism as well in order to really understand more of the movement. In order to kind of fulfill my part on educating other people I'm making my boyfriend read this book because especially more men need to read non-fiction books about feminism because feminism is still such a misunderstood subject. I believe I gave this one a five out of five stars just because it touched upon subjects such as body image and slut shaming and how Marie and Nidia have experienced this both in their lives and stuff like that. Very interesting. Is the lighting weird? I don't know. The sun is peeking through the sky and it's just not working perhaps in my favor. Those were literally the only two books that I finished in May but considering my deadlines I think it's pretty okay. Now let's go on to June because I read five books in that month. One of those is The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House by Audre Lorde. She describes herself as black lesbian, a mother warrior poet and that is on the back of this collection of essays that Audre Lorde has written. Unfortunately she has passed away at the beginning of the 90s. This collection contains four of her essays and it's all about feminism, racism, and being black and I thought the essays were really wonderful 
wonderful to read sometimes because I'm not a native English speaker certain sentences I had to reread it a couple of times in order to fully understand it she has just so many wonderful quotes it was a quick read and I think a very important read and I will definitely be looking at more of Audre Lorde's work I believe she's written a lot of great poetry as well so I will definitely check that out and I give this book a four out of five stars after that I listened to an audiobook I don't do that very often but I saw that this one was on scribed or script I never know how to say that app's name oh my god and that was the black flamingo by Dean Adda and this is one of my new favorite books of 2020 it was so good chef's kiss Mm -mm. <laughs> this is a book written in verse but I didn't really get that from it because I was listening to it so I didn't really like notice that but it is a book written in verse about a biracial gay teen and you follow basically his whole life story throughout childhood to him going into university and one of his hobbies when he comes into university is drag and that was so wonderful I've never seen a book written about drag but this was a very impactful story I think the way that Dean Adda wrote this was done in such a beautiful way and it touched upon lots of important subjects such as exploring your sexuality and gender roles and ideas that we have with being a guy or being a girl and what we are allowed to do in that sense and it was very refreshing I loved it so incredibly much I believe I gave this one a five out of five stars just because it blew me away and I was so sucked into it and Dean Adda also narrates this story which I think is always so nice when the author is narrating the audiobook as well I think that's just very personal. After that I read a book that was uh, disappointing <laughs> and that is The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Millwood. Hargrave. I don't know if you guys follow Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin because he hosted in May a readathon that is based around children's literature and unfortunately I couldn't participate but did inspire me to pick up a children's book again because I don't do that enough. I don't have a lot of children's novels and I still have this one on my shelves. I remember that Leonie from the book Leo when I started following her like four or five years ago she was raving about this middle grade book and she loved it so much so I decided to pick it up and oh boy it was a bit difficult to get through for me <laughs> so our main character is Isabella and she lives on this island called Joya and a couple of years ago this governor came to their city Romera and ever since that governor came there the residents have been prohibited from visiting and exploring the rest of the island so now those parts of the island are called the forbidden territories her best friend disappears and Isabella decides that she wants to become a part of the search party and her father is also a map maker and she has a lot of his knowledge as well hence why she's kind of becoming part of the search team and there's also an old ancient myth involved in this story and the history of the island so it sounded all very promising like a very adventurous read which I looked forward to very much this book had so much potential and I thought I was gonna love it but I didn't and that was a shame our main character Isabella is very adventurous and brave which I do really appreciate but she felt very selfish sometimes and her best friend she was too naive and too forgiving so that was something that I didn't really like plus also lots of the time whilst I was reading this book so many things happened in just a couple of sentences and it changed the whole kind of plot of the story and I wasn't fully aware sometimes of what was happening so I needed to reread lots of the pages so overall one of my least favorite books in 2020 that I've read I think I'd give this one like a two and a half to a three out of five stars after that I listened to another audiobook I was just like strolling through nature and then I decided let's listen to Dear Iawele or a Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions by Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I hope that I'm pronouncing everything correctly. I'm sorry if I didn't. One of Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie's friends asked her like how should I raise my daughter a feminist and Shimamanda kind of wrote 15 suggestions on how to raise her best friend's daughter a feminist but of course those were just suggestions. This was a non-fiction book about feminism again and it touched upon so many things that I could recognize myself in and that I could recognize my surrounding and like our society in which was very frustrating lots of the times and I think Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie is going to be one of my new favorite especially non-fiction authors I haven't read anything of her fiction perhaps I should <laughs> that would be a good idea but it touched me and I finished it whilst I was walking and I was listening to it so very intensely so definitely five out of five stars to this one and then the last book that I finished in June is a bit of a lighter book it's not non-fiction 
fiction. It is actually a YA rom-com contemporary novel and that is Date Me Bryson Keller by Kevin Ben Y. This is a new release. I believe it came out in May or June. Our main character is called Kai, not Bryson Keller, as perhaps the title could suggest, but Bryson Keller is one of the students at Fairfield Academy just as Kai and Bryson was so opposed to dating that his friend group, that his friend group created like a bet that he should be dating one person every single week in their school. If he couldn't find another date every single week, he would have some kind of punishment. Bryson Keller never stated that it should only be girls that he should be dating. So Kai, our main character, a boy, asks Bryson Keller out to date him. And this sounded like such a fun and hopefully cute contemporary novel about a boy meets boy and a boy falls in love with a boy. And overall, I enjoyed this book very much. It was really fluffy, it was very cutesy, and sometimes a little bit cheesy, which is not my absolute favorite in a book. But I was like so in the mood for a book like this that I felt kind of okay with it. But usually cheesiness and especially kind of insta love, which is a little bit happening in this book is definitely a big pet peeve of mine, hence why this is not my new favorite book of 2020 or of all time. This book definitely deals with some serious topics as well, like sexuality and homophobia, also with some racism issues because Kai is part of a biracial family. However, one thing that I didn't really love about it is that Bryson Keller was such a perfect love interest. It almost seemed like nothing was wrong with him, which I don't know. I don't find that very realistic. I just love a good realistic romance. And this was not that, but it was very cute. I would definitely give this one a three and a half out of five stars. It was still highly enjoyable and it was exactly what I needed at the time. So those were all the books that I read in May and June. Now let's go on to my currently reading. Unfortunately, I didn't finish a book in June. It was supposed to finish and that is White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. This was part of the Black buddy read hosted by Books with Shay. So that is definitely on my reading plans for July. It's a very educational book. It is a non- fiction book written by a white author mainly aimed towards white people about racism and why it's so difficult to talk to white people about racism. I've learned quite a lot from it until so far but in the future I will definitely be picking up nonfiction books about racism written by black authors. And then the other book that I'm currently reading is Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foodie. This book has been on my bookshelves for like over three years maybe. I received this in a fairy loot. I was looking at it at my shelves. I just didn't know in what type of reading mood I was and I felt this book, okay? <laughs> this is a YA fantasy book that involves a circus and our main character is Serena. She is a 16 year old girl who can create the most realistic illusions ever. So in this traveling circus, the Gomorrah Festival, she has a freak show together with her created illusions. She kind of considers them her family. But where the story really takes off in this book is when one of her illusions is killed, which should be impossible because it is an illusion. And I believe what I've kind of like read from reviews of this book on Goodreads is that this is like a fantasy murder mystery type of book. I'm really quite enjoying it until so far. I'm on page 85. But yeah, it's interesting until so far and I have no clue where the story is gonna go next. So I'm very excited to find that out. And yeah, those were all the books that I wanted to talk about with you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. Let me know what you have read in May or June. Maybe you've also read some of the books that I talked about today. Definitely let me know your opinion about them. If you want to follow me on all of my different social media pages, of course you can. Because I'm a booktuber, of course I have Goodreads, but I also have Instagram, Twitter, and an Etsy shop. So if you guys want to check that out, links are in the description box down below as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!